Hi, I'm Ben O'Schmidt. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's D-Life. Because guess what? We at D-Life have been listening to you. You've told us through the D-Life mail, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter what you want to know more about. So for the next several weeks, we'll have new segments on pre-diabetes, what it is and what it means to you, and technology, how it can help and simplify your life. Plus, we'll visit my favorite, Jim Turner, for his unique, inspired, and very humorous takes on what it's like to live with diabetes. So, let's get started. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator, and this is Leslie Josell. Leslie is a certified professional organizer and the owner of Order Out of Chaos. And together, we are writing the complete diabetes organizer, your guide to a less stressful and a more manageable diabetes life. It's going to come out this fall, and we can't wait for you to see it. Leslie, I am so excited that you're going to help me learn how to organize all of the healthy and nutritious foods that we have in the pantry, both for those that have diabetes and for everybody. We're gonna share some real user-friendly tips and some strategies. Now there's three rules of thumb. Easy breezy, everyone can do this at home. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna categorize our food. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is we're going to maximize our storage space. And the last one is labeling. So let's open up our pantry Great. and let's show you what we can do. Figure out what products you use the most. What foods does you and your family use on an everyday basis? That should take up your prime real estate. So think shoulders to knees. Everything oh. in your eye line. So for our kitchen, for our pantry, it's beans, canned goods, crackers, things like those. Wow. Cool. Now, all of your bulk items, let's say you brought home a big heavy bag of rice or you have some bags of potatoes, those should go on the bottom. Bulk items always stored on the bottom. And for those, you know, we have to have a few treats in the house, just a few. I like to put them way up here so we kind of make the family have to work for them a little bit. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> okay? Great idea. So, and spices, absolutely in your eye line because we don't want to have to touch every single one to find the spice we need. And this is great because you can see what the spices are right on this kind right. of rack. This, this is a three-tiered rack. This is a three-tiered rack. I love this also. This is to keep your your teas and also some of your um, artificial non-nutritive sweeteners. So the space underneath a shelf in a pantry is usually the most underutilized space. What I want to show you is how our bins truly maximize the space in the pantry. So you can see that these types of bins go all the way to the back. So any items that you would might not normally find, now you can easily see when you pull the basket right out. Oh, you don't necessarily fantastic. have to have a shelf that rolls. You can even have these on your stationary shelves, pull it out, and you see everything you have. Any bins most of the time will do, so you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on your bins. The dollar store is a great place to find bins, baskets, even a tray will work. But this particular bin is, is fantastic if you have vegetables because it's perforated. So if you had a bag of potatoes, which we do have on a lower shelf, in this type of bin, it also helps whatever is in it as a vegetable breathe. So great idea. Oh, I didn't even Wonderful know that. Bin. So I just learned something. That's awesome. Yes. What a great idea. So even if you have something already in the house, we purpose it. The most important thing to remember is to corral your items but corral them by grouping, not by size. Makes cooking a breeze that way. For example, here are some nut butters. So we want to corral peanut butters, almond butters, sunflower seed butter, whatever kind of nut butters you want in one easily found bin. But not only can you get what you want, you can put back where it goes. Like, I know I have young children at home, so if I'm asking them to put something away, I don't want them to just stick it wherever there's room. I want to be able to put it back where I can find it again. So with everything in bins and everything labeled, 
We're not having that dialogue. Mm -hmm. They know exactly where <laughs> it goes. That's great. That's great. <laughs> and down here, look at this. What a great idea. Not all vegetables should be stored in the refrigerator. So here we have onions and we have potatoes. Not in the same bin, in separate bins but they stay nice and fresh in areas that are cool. I just also want to mention when we have a lot of canned goods that when we bring things new home from the store, always bring the old one to the front and put the new one to the back. This way we're always rotating out and we're not in any danger of using anything that might have been expired. It's so important to use that first in, first out rule. When After you rotate them, always check on the expiration dates of the products. Look at your product and check for where the expiration date. Spices only last about a year. That's a great gift. If you're going to someone's house and you don't know what to bring them, it doesn't have to be a fudge chocolate layer cake. <laughs> bring them a new spice rack. It's a really terrific idea. Well, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I always bring a bottle of olive oil, but I like that's the spices good idea. too. Absolutely. I like the spices. That's and a we, great idea. And, and look at this. We have our bin of our vinegars and oils. Mm -hmm. So again, the bin goes all the way to the back so that we're never missing out on what we might have tucked away mm -hmm. there years ago. I think this looks awesome, Susan. Absolutely. Nice I think organized. it looks great. Very, very simple. Very simple. And finally, we have a special <laughs> treat a la Leslie. Okay, so when I'm in a kitchen, most kitchens don't have a lot of space. So I'm always looking at the airspace. I'm thinking, can I hang pots and pans from the ceiling? Can I even mount maybe the spice rack or even the knives under the cabinet? Anything to get your, your items out of the pantry and somewhere else so to maximize the space you have. One of the best kept secrets we have is behind the pantry door. So here's a little trick that I have for you. A shoe bag. A shoe bag. A clear but you, shoe bag. You see, I'm a one note girl. That's Gotta it. be clear. <laughs> but hang a shoe bag, hopefully you'll make it clear, on the back of your door and you can literally tuck in snacks or supplies really make a grab and go. And, and look at all these healthy snacks that fit right into the shoe bag. We have almonds and we have pretzels. Don't worry, they're all counted. <laughs> you can look at the label to see how many carbs and calories are right. in here. And we have high fiber bars here as well and even a rice cake. There's so much to choose from and so much that you can put into this bag. Leslie, this is a fantastic Isn't this fun? tip. I think it's a great idea, and you can do this in any pantry door you have in your kitchen. For more tips on organizing, please check out dlife.com slash organize. Thank you so much for joining us today here on DLife TV. Hi, I'm Chef Michel Nishan and welcome to the D-Life Kitchen. Now it's easy to get into a funk with salads. We pick out the same veggies, we pick out the same dressings we know and like. Well, today I have a salad that features nutritious turnip greens. And to top it all off, I'm using a flavorful and hot sweet and sour dressing. Now let's get started by talking about the greens. Turnip greens in the brassica family are super, super packed with all kinds of nutrients, phytochemicals, vitamins, and they have a lot of fiber, very, very low in carbs. Really awesome. Mustard, what a great way to get a little bit of spiciness into something without adding chilies or some of the other ingredients that we need to kind of spice it up. In here I have a store-bought organic mescaline mix. I like to pick out the mescaline mix that has frise in it. Frise is also in the mustard family and just really kind of hearty and sturdy. So we're gonna put a couple of cups, four cups of greens total. And then we're gonna take some nice grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes are fine. And we have some pre-julienne carrots. And we're basically gonna pre-mix it because once you get the dressing hot, it gets a little harder to see that the vegetables are evenly distributed. Now, for the dressing, here's the key. I have a little bit of water. I'm gonna add half of it to a hot pan. You can see that steam, and we want that. And now I'm gonna add the scallions. Raw scallions in a salad can be a little bit unpleasant, but if you heat them just for a minute or two in some simmering water, steam them, the sharpness goes away, and you get this wonderful, round, sweet, sweet scallion flavor. So we're gonna let those steam just a little bit. Now, in the uh, dish that the water was in, I'm gonna add a little bit of whole wheat flour. I'm gonna stir that in. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar. 
Now you might think, ooh, brown sugar, I'm living with diabetes, why are you adding brown sugar? That's just a little bit of brown sugar and look at the amount of greens that we have. So it's really not that big of a deal. It's still within a balanced, very acceptable and helpful diet for people living with diabetes. And then we're gonna put in a little bit of salt, a little bit of freshly milled pepper, one of my favorites, and let me not forget the celery seed. That celery seed gives it a really nice flavor. It's very popular in stuff like coleslaw. So now that's nicely incorporated. Here I'm gonna come over and you can see that the scallions are beautifully steamed. And now we're just gonna whisk in the flour, water, sugar, celery seed mix. And wait for this to thicken itself. Now I'm gonna put in a little bit of white wine vinegar just to finish it off. And this is what's gonna give that kind of sweet, sour quality that we love in a hot dressing. And now we're gonna just take this beautiful hot dressing and drizzle it over these greens. And look at that. Man, this just smells really awesome. Now we're gonna just toss it. Gonna to get down on the bottom of the bowl, stir up some of these heavier veggies. Make sure that everything is really nicely coated. And again, the smells are just driving me crazy. I just, this is my favorite type of salad. It's hearty, it's toothy, it's got a good mix of vegetables, and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. Let's find a plate and let's see how beautiful this salad is. Are you ready for this? There's a beautiful serving of a mustard turnip and mescaline green salad with a hot and sour dressing. Now you can find this recipe and thousands more like it at dlife.com slash recipe box. But try this one out this week and then be sure to go back to the website, give it a review. I'm Chef Michelle Nishan. See you next time in the DLife Kitchen. Hi, D-Lifers, and thanks for joining me, Benno Schmidt, for another edition of one of my favorite features on D-Life, Where Are They Now? There's a lot we don't talk about or deal with when living with diabetes or helping others cope. But one extraordinary guy has dedicated his life to just that, with humor, style, and courage. It's been an explosive time for Max and his organization, Divabetic. Curious? You should be. Max and Diva Bedek are incredible and bring a unique take on diabetes. It's been eight years of growth for Max and the organization he started, which is all about getting people talking about diabetes and putting shame, embarrassment, and isolation on hold. He wants those he works with to discuss whatever they normally don't, those subjects once taboo. It's about encouraging people to feel better about themselves. I think that the idea of diabetes and the unexpected blood sugar, highs and lows that we're dealing with, you need someone to come in there and help you make you smile. What started as a simple program is now a traveling show. Max has taken to over 20 cities. His mission? To get people with diabetes to let loose and connect with their disease in a positive, fun way. So if we could get Ricky Martin to help you with a song from Evita, you might actually try broccoli. When he's not on the road, Max, also fondly referred to as Mr. Divabetic, is hosting informative diabetes podcast interviews with such guests as actor, dancer, and singer Ben Vereen, and actress, singer Melba Moore, educational roundtable discussions with some of the industry's top physicians, and creating videos aimed at teaching diabetes education in a fun and inventive way. So one of the things I love to do is play games, and playing games at my live events has become a tradition. And also now, I've been doing it on video, which is just an amazing thing for myself because Luther showed me how to be entertaining. So I take the concepts in nutrition like carb counting, and I've mixed it up and made it a lot of fun by introducing a cat named Carb Kitty to help everyone have more fun learning about nutrition. And if you're wondering about his suit, well, it's a fruit suit. Actually, I'm wearing the fruit suit because I like encourage people to have five servings of fruits and vegetables every day. And unfortunately, most of the people I outreach to at Divabetic have had one or two. So every time I wear the fruit suit, which is really inspired by Luther Vandross, he used to wear tuxedos all the time on stage. I even put on some jewels now so I look more like uh, I belong on the Luther Vandross stage. But behind the costumes and theatrics is a method aimed at getting folks to feel comfortable talking about diabetes 
and challenges with sex and other issues many don't want to talk about. So the idea here is to really get people comfortable uh, and sharing their knowledge of what they know in order for that knowledge to grow. What's next for Divabetic and Max? He learned from his mentor Luther Vondros, and those lessons are seen in his new work as he and Divabetic continue to evolve. This has been such an amazing eight years for me, a journey with Divabetic, starting at D-Life, and you know, my goal that I found is I just want to reach more and more people. It's incredible that when I first started, I only knew one woman living with diabetes, and today I know thousands. And so my goal really now is I want to still go back to the cities that I travel to with Luther and put on some amazing, entertaining outreach. I'd love to meet my international divas because they found us and I truly believe that we have an, a wonderful American approach to how we're dealing with this disease. And also, I just want to do more and more videos because they seem to be something that everyone's embracing and I'm not going to give up. I've got my boa, I've got my fruit suit, and I'm ready to come to you. Wow, I love getting to know Max and his divas. And I guess I qualify, right? It's all in how you look at living with diabetes. That's what Max taught me. And I'm so glad he's leading Divabetic. That's it for this edition of Where Are They Now? See you next time. Hi, I'm Joy Pape, Certified Diabetes Educator, and I'm here to answer the D-Life mail. A D-Life member asked, what is the rule of 15? The rule of 15 is the way to treat a low blood sugar. Here's a time when you need to have a plan. When your blood sugar is low, which is defined as a blood sugar of less than 70, this is really what you should do. First of all, it's kind of hard to know what to do right at the moment, that's why you need a plan. Because symptoms of low blood sugar sometimes can be that you're really hungry, maybe you're confused, maybe you're irritable, not thinking straight. People have different symptoms. What you should do if you feel that symptom is check your blood sugar. If your blood sugar is 70 or below, you start with the rule of 15. If you don't have your meter, still start with the rule of 15. And the rule of 15 is 15 grams of carbohydrate every 15 minutes until your blood sugar is over 70. So if your blood sugar is 70 or below, you want to take 15 grams of carbohydrate. Quick acting. What does that mean? It means something that's going to go to work right away. For example, like 15 grams of carbohydrate in orange juice or some sort of juice or soda. So it's very easy because you're so hungry and you're ready to eat the house to take more than that. But this is 15 grams of carbohydrate, about a half a cup of soda or juice. Or it could be five to six pieces of hard candy. It could be glucose tablets, three or four glucose tablets. It could be a tablespoon of honey or sugar, but you should always have something with you. A tip on that is to carry something with you that you don't like very much. So if you're carrying five or six pieces of candy with you that you like, that candy may be calling you before you have a low blood sugar. So you take those 15 grams of carbohydrate and then you wait 15 minutes and check your blood sugar again. If it's 70 or above and it's time for a meal, go ahead and eat. But if it's not 70 or above, treat again. You wait 15 minutes and you check again. And you continue to do that until your blood sugar is 70 or above, and then once again, go ahead and eat. This is Joy Pape, Certified Diabetes Educator with DLifeTV.com. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's DLife TV. 
And we're serious when we say we want to hear from you. What are you interested in? What do you want to know more about? Send us your ideas right below. Or contact us with Facebook or Twitter. And for all of you film buffs, there's a chance your video could actually appear right here on DLife. That's it for tonight's show. I'm Benno Schmidt. We'll see you next Sunday.